Test, test. All right, let's try this again. My name is Gareth, I'm with the Hub Online Network. I apologize for just being myself in the studio today and for starting so late. Uh, typically I would want to do this at 11 a.m., but this thing is happening so, this coronavirus is changing so rapidly, uh, getting all the information uh, put into one spot is quite time consuming. So, um, what I'm going to be doing is going through a bunch of different stuff from the government of Canada, the province, uh, the, the provincial government, uh, what's happening in Ashcroft and Cache Creek, because there's been a lot of changes since, changes since yesterday. Uh, Jessica is at home monitoring this uh, feed, so if you guys at home have any questions or concerns or comments, please send them to Jessica. Also, if you would like, I have my cell phone here, so you can give me a call at 250-457-0538, and I'll answer your call live on the uh, broadcast. Again, that's 250-457-0538, and I will answer your call live on the broadcast. So, uh, the papers that I have here are not necessarily in any kind of an order. I will try and, uh, I'm just going to try and get through these as best as I can. But a lot is going on. So, in our local community, we have, from the Elizabeth Fry Society, uh, to all of our incredible clients and community members who have supported and loved us for so many years, your health and, our, and the health of our staff is of the utmost importance. We have taken the precautionary measure to the COVID-19 virus and we will be closed for public access until further notice. If you need us, please call 250-453-9656. Again, that's 250-453-9656. And we can connect you with our staff through telephone conversations. To our food bank patrons, we will continue to provide you with the services on the first and third Wednesday of the month as usual. It will just look different as we will be setting up outside a new and improved drive through Please take care of yourself and each other. Again, that is from the Elizabeth Fry Society in Ashcroft. Um, however, the Equality Project is still open with its regular hours as of yesterday. Uh, if you're looking for their services, you can find them on Facebook or call 250-457-6485. Again, this is the Equality Project in Cache Creek. Their number is 250-457-6485. <clears throat> so, the uh, auxiliary thrift store down on ba uh, 601 Bancroft Street in Ashcroft is closed until it is deemed safe for our customers and volunteers and families uh, to be reopened. Please hold on to your amazing donations until the store is open again. Thank you for your understanding and stay healthy. Again, that is the auxiliary thrift store uh, at 601 Bancroft Street in Ashcroft. Um, the Ashcroft Early Years Services in Ashcroft has says, Hi everyone, I have decided that in light of the public health warnings about social distancing and the concerns regarding the ongoing pandemic, I will be cancelling all playgroups until further notice. I wish everyone the best of health through this troubling time. If anybody has any concerns or just needs someone to talk to, I am available. I have not all the answers, but I will do what I can. That is a message from the Ashcroft Early Years Services. Uh, as of this morning, the uh, federally, the Trudeau, uh, Justin Trudeau and Donald Trump have decided that they're going to shut down the U.S. border to all unnecessary crossings. This means no tourism, but goods are still able to cross uh, to keep supply lines flowing, but not much beyond that. So if you're planning any short trips to the States, be prepared that you're not going to be able to go. Uh, as of 6 a.m. this morning, closures for all bars and clubs are in effect. So I'm assuming, I haven't heard specifically about the Oasis or the River Inn. I'm assuming that this means all bars, so the Oasis and the River Inn, I'm sure, are affected by that closure. Uh, before we talk about teachers, so we have from Esther Lang, 
Now, the Ashruff and Area Community Resources Society would like to offer the following to seniors and those with disabilities in Ashcroft and Cash Creek. If you need groceries or to have your mail checked and are unable to go yourself, please call Esther. If Esther cannot help you, uh, she will try to find someone who can. Please contact the pharmacy for any prescriptions. So Esther was going around town. She went to the pharmacy. They said that no, not just anybody can pick up pres prescriptions for anybody else. Um, so. If you need prescriptions, call the pharmacy and they will set up a way to get prescriptions to you in a delivery method. Also, anyone that is willing to help, please call Esther and she will create a list and keep you informed about how you can help. Esther's phone number is 250-453-9085. Again, this is Esther Lang. Her number is 250-453-9085. I gotta say, I have heard about this type of thing a couple of different times um, from Esther, from David Dirksen, and from uh, Vicki Trill at the Hub. All of them are trying to coordinate some kind of a, uh, a net to be able to get groceries and essential uh, items to people that might not be able to go out themselves and get it. So Esther, Vicki Trill at the Hub, and David Dirksen are your people to connect with and you, we, we can connect you to them. So if you want, you can email us at hon at ashrofthub.com and we can get that information to those people uh, if you're looking to help out. Um, let's see what else we got here. Okay, <clears throat> so from the Ashcroft Bakery, we are open. However, due to the declaration of a public health emergency, we ask for social distancing. This is one, this is one to two meters between patrons. Of, all of our products can be made available in a to-go manner. We can also make arrangements, arrangements to deliver to anyone that is in self-isolation. Please be respectful of each other's space and be safe. Remember to wash and sanitize as much as possible. Thank you for your continued support of the Ashcroft Bakery business. It means a lot to all of us, the Ashcroft Bakery and Coffee Shop, Deb Tui. From Unity, to Unity's valued customers, amid all the uncertainty in the outside world, uh, I, as in Nadine, have made the difficult decision to close Unity's cafe temporarily. I feel this decision is best for our customers, my staff, and our communities. With all of Unity's live music shows and local events having to be postponed or cancelled, it is very difficult to make ends meet or pay all of my bills. Please support the restaurants who can provide takeout or, or, or who are participating in, in a healthy distancing practice in Ashcroft and the surrounding region. They will need your support. Rest assured, I am trying to create other income sources in the meantime, but do appreciate the purchasing of gift certificates for you or your friends and family to use while Uni when Unity reopens. That is from Nadine at Unity. Uh, <clears throat> so, uh, from Community Futures in Ashcroft. There is a business impact survey. In recent days, we've been consumed with the news on the COVID-19 pandemic and how it's affecting our health, our families, our small businesses, and our communities across the province. During this time, it's critical that we understand the economic impacts you anticipate in the weeks and months ahead and how government and related agencies can support BC businesses to ensure they stay viable. That's why we partnered with Small Businesses BC, the BC Chamber of Commerce, and the BC Economic Development Association to create a short survey for big and small businesses alike throughout BC. The survey takes less than four minutes to complete. All feedback received will go to various levels of government to help them shape their response to the crisis. We ask that you please complete the survey and please note the survey closes tonight at 6 p.m. Uh, so I will put a link to the survey in the description of this video. And please, if you are a business, fill that out and help Community Futures help you. From the school district. So this looks like it's actually from uh, the school board minister for BC. 
Um, so dear parents, guardians, and staff, the health and safety of our students, staff, and their families is our highest priority. The global pandemic, COVID-19, is moving quickly and its, imp and its impact on British Columbians is growing. We have followed the decision, we have followed the, the direction daily of public health officials and scientists to make fact-based decisions when the time when it comes to BC's school system. Today, under the direction of the Provincial Health Officer, we are directing all schools to immediately suspend in-class instruction until further notice. While classroom lessons are suspended, it is expected that schools will implement a variety of measures to ensure continued learning for students. We are urging teachers, principals, school districts, and independent school authorities to begin planning now to ensure continuity of learning, and I have tasked Ministry of Education staff to work with our education partners to coordinate these initiatives. We expect school districts and independent schools will develop plans to maintain some level of service for children of people who are performing essential services across the province, like medical health professionals, first responders, pharmacists, and critical infrastructure workers. We also know that there are vulnerable students who have unique needs, important services like school meal programs and child care services operating on school grounds that need to be addressed. We expect schools to consider these issues in their planning while we work together through these extraordinary times. Every student will receive a final mark, and all students on track to move on to the next grade will do so in the fall. For grades 10 and 11 students, graduation assessments will be postponed. Every student eligible to graduate from grade 12 this year will graduate. The only graduation assessment required for grade 12 students is the grade 10 numeracy assessment. The Ministry of Education will ensure grade 12 students who have not yet completed this assessment and who are otherwise on track to graduate are able to meet this graduation requirement. The Ministry will also work with the Ministry of Advanced Education, Skills and Training and with post-secondary institutions on administrations and the smooth transition of graduating students in the extraordinary year. We will continue to work in consolation with the education partners as we plan for ongoing learning, including frequent contact with school districts to ensure we work through this together as plans are developed. This is very challenging time in BC and around the world. Please take necessary preventative measures to keep you and your families healthy. If you think you have symptoms, the Ministry of Health has developed an online self-assessment tool, which we will go over in a minute, and the COVID-19 Thrive Health if at covid19.thrive.health. If you have symptoms, you can call 811 to prearrange health testing while symptomatic uh, self-isolate. So speaking of the... Uh, where are we here? The self-assessment tool. So it is at covid19.thrive.health. Again, that is covid19.thrive.health. I'm going to read out what the self-assessment says. So the self-assessment tool developed with the BC Ministry of Health will help determine whether you may need further assessment or testing of, for COVID-19. You can complete this assessment for yourself or on behalf of someone else if they are unable to. So who, you sh who should be tested for COVID-19? People with respiratory systems who are hospitalized or likely to be hospitalized, healthcare workers, residents of long-term care facilities, part of an investigation of a cluster or outbreak. What does not need to be tested for COVID-19? People without symptoms, patient with mild respiratory symptoms who can be managed at home, including returning travelers with an onset of illness within 14 days of return to Canada. The BC Ministry of Health strongly urges anyone who has symptoms, including fever, cough, sneezing, sore throat, or difficulty breathing, to self-isolate for 14 days to protect yourself while out in public, wash your hands frequently, and maintain a distance of about 2 meters from each other. For more, for more information on COVID-19, refer to HealthLink BC's COVID-19 website. So then there is an actual um, uh, test you can take. So if you're experiencing any of the following, severe difficulty breathing, severe chest pain, having a very hard time waking up, 
uh, feeling confused, losing consciousness. So I'm just going to click yes and see what happens. So it, right away it says, please call 911 or go directly to your nearest emergency department. If I click no, uh, are you experiencing any of the following? Shortness of breath at rest. Uh, inability to lie down because of difficulty breathing. Chronic health conditions that you are having difficulty managing because of difficulty breathing. So again, let's click yes. And that says, please call 811 to speak with a health link BC. If I say no, then it says, are you experiencing any of the following? Fever, cough, sneezing, sore throat, difficulty breathing. Let's say yes. Please stay at home. So it's not telling you that you have to call 811. Um, please stay at home. As the precaution, the Ministry of Health is asking anyone with symptoms, fever, cough, sneezing, sore throat, or difficulty breathing to stay at home for 14 days. Continue with this tool to determine additional precautionary steps you should be taking. Um, so, did the development of information within 14 days, did you travel outside of Canada? If I say yes, please self-isolate self and call 811 to speak with Health Link BC. If I say no to that, then it says that you should be fine and there you go. So that is again the uh, self-assessment tool at covid19.thrive.health. Take that for yourself and see what needs to be done. Going back to our papers here. So we talked about the schools being closed, um, but BC teachers will return to work after spring break, spring break to determine next steps. According to BC Teachers Federation memo, uh, teachers will return to work after spring break, although it's not known exactly what that looks like at this point. Now, uh, Justin Trudeau did a statement this morning outside of his house, and these are just a few of the things that he brought up, uh, mainly having to do with um, finances and that sort of thing. So the emergency aid plan includes a temporary boost to the Canada Child Benefit Payments, delivering about $2 billion in extra support a new emergency care benefit of up to $900 bi-weekly uh, for up to 15 weeks to provide income support to workers, including the self-employed, who have to stay home and don't qualify for paid sick leave or employment insurance. The measure could disperse up to $10 billion. So that's different. Uh, so if you are self-employed, not usually eligible for EI, you can still go and apply for this emergency care benefit. Uh, a new emergency support benefit to provide $5 billion in support to workers who are not eligible for EI and who are facing unemployment. A six-month interest-free reprieve on student loan payments. Let's say that again. A six-month interest-free reprieve on student loan payments. Doubling the homeless care program. They're going to be extending the tax filing deadline until June 1st. They will be allowing taxpayers to defer their payments until after August 31st, tax, pay tax payments that are due after today and before September. There will be $305 million for a new Indigenous Community Support Fund to address immediate needs in First Nations, Inuit and Métis Nation communities. And other measures include a GST credit for low-income Canadians and special support for the homeless and shelters helping people escaping gender-based violence. So there are some of the things that Justin Trudeau talked about this morning in his address to the nation. So yesterday, there was another uh, joint statement provided by uh, Adrian Dix and Dr. Bonnie Henry. Um, so this talks about more BC as a whole. Uh, we are deeply saddened to announce that a further three people who have tested positive for COVID-19 have recently passed away. Two were residents of Lynn Valley, you know what, I think I read this yesterday. Um, two were residents of the Lynn Valley Care Center and one was a man in his 80s from the Fraser Health region. We offer our heartfelt condolences to their loved ones. We're also announcing 83 new, new cases of COVID-19 for a total of 186 cases in British Columbia. Um, now that being said, we have come across a website that shows all of the current cases of the COVID-19 pandemic. 
um, both, well, not both, but f with different factors. So there's a global uh, look at it, um, and then it breaks it down into countries. So if we look at Canada on this particular website, so Canada is currently sitting with 592 cases across the country with 10 deaths. We've had 11 people recover, which is a good positive. Um, we are almost tied with Ontario, like BC is almost tied with Ontario for the amount of cases that we have, but BC does have the most deaths up to this point. Um, and that website is, yeah, I'll, I'll put it in, in the link in the description of this video. Um, they're saying that there is a steep increase in the number of new confirmed COVID-19 cases in BC. It is in large part a result of consolidating data this week as our reporting process aligns with the increase of the numbers of tests that is now taking place in five sites around the province. Um, we anticipate, but they are hoping that this will level off. The provincial health officer has declared a public health emergency. This is an additional step to ensure our province has more tools available to respond to COVID-19. This declaration enables the provincial health officer to facilitate an even faster response to the rapidly changing situation and enact further measures to protect British Columbians, such as enforcement of others, limiting public gatherings of 50 people or more. Effective immediately, businesses with liquor primary licenses, such as bars, pubs, and nightclubs, must close as they are unable to adequately meet the requirements of social distancing. Restaurants and cafes that cannot maintain social distancing of one or two meters between patrons will need to move to takeout and delivery methods. We also remind British Columbians that public gatherings of more than 50 people, indoors or outdoors, must be cancelled. This is the second time the Provincial Health Officer has served notice under the Public Health Act uh, since 2016. We like to remind people that tests are available for all those who need them, but not everyone requires a test. To further support people who are wondering if they should be tested, a new self-assessment tool, which we covered before, is available. Uh, do, the, do that test before calling 811. Now, so Barbara Roden over at the Ashcroft Cash Creek Journal has uh, graciously compiled a bunch of, of uh, news articles. So please, I'm only going to talk about the headlines that she has provided. Uh, please, if you would like more information about any of these specific topics that I'm covering here in the next few minutes, go over to the Ashcroft Cash Creek Journal's Facebook page where you can find all of this information out for yourself. Um, so... Health Inc. 811. So do the self-assessment, call 811. Um, the 811 is a non-emergency line for medical information. Uh, information sources, sorry, one second here. Gracious viewers. Uh, so the village of Ashcroft, well, I'll read you this village of Ashcroft. So the village of Ashcroft at 601 Bancroft Street remains open during regular hours until March 31st. The office will now be open over the lunch hour. Um, now accept to accept utility payments. Extra cleaning measures are being taken. Anyone who has not yet paid the utility bill and who does not want or is unable to come into the office can mail in a check. Um, the community hall remains open to user. The Ashcroft community hall remains open to user groups who may not decide to cancel or postpone planned programs and events. Extra cleaning supplies are on hand. Village of Cash Creek. The village of Cash Creek remains open during regular hours. Extra clean measures are being taken and garbage pickup will take place on the regulatory, regularly scheduled days. Anyone who has not yet paid their utility bill can via check. Uh, the gym at the Cash Creek Hall is closed, which we covered yesterday. <clears throat> um, I do have a statement from the MLA, but I'll read you the MP's statement which we have an interview going on with Brad Viss, our MP, this afternoon, which will be posted tomorrow morning. 
So Mission Mask Fraser Valley MP Brad Viss is asking constituents to practice precaution, avoid non-essential travel, and enact social distancing to help prevent the spread of uh, COVID-19. He and his staff remain available to assist constituents via phone. Um, and I'll read out Jackie Taggart's statement in a minute. The community bus, the community bus operated by BC Transit and Yellowhead Community Services is continuing to operate all regulatory scheduled services and additional cleaning of the bus is taking place. If you'd like more information, you can call 250-674-2600. Again, that is 250-674-2600. Libraries are closed. Um, In response to the COVID-19 pandemic in British Columbia, ICBC is suspending all driver road tests effective March 17th. Again, all driver road tests are canceled as of yesterday. Uh, the hub is closed. Minor soccer uh, association is suspended. Um, the Equality Project Clubhouse is open. Uh, EFI Food Bank is closed, but the food bank will stay open on Mondays and Wednesdays. Clinton Food Bank is open on the first and third Tuesdays of the month. Soups on. As of March 20th and until further notice, Soups on at St. Albans Anglican Church in Ashcroft will be operating on a takeaway basis only. Oh, good on. Good on you, Soups on. So Soups on is still happening, but you will not be able to sit down in St. Albans. You'll have to take it away. Uh, thrift stores. The second time around will also be closed. So the both of the thrift stores in Ashcroft will be closed. Ashcroft Hub is closed to the public. Uh, my soccer is closed. Clinton Seniors, Ashcroft, the Ashcroft Legion remains open as of this time of going to press has had suspended Friday, but they have suspended. So the Ashcroft Legion is open, but they have suspended Friday night and Saturday night dinners and meat draws respectively. So again, that's some of the headlines from the Ashcroft Cash Creek Journal. Go over to their Facebook page, check that out, and get the full story there. Um, for immediate release from Interior Health for today, March 18th, COVID-19 update. Uh, Interior Health is working on partnership with the Ministry of Health and the BC Centre for Disease Control to respond to COVID-19. Along with other agencies and health authority, authorities, IH has pandemic plans in place and is prepared to adjust capacity as required. As part of this planning and following direction from the Ministry of Health on March 16th, IH will immediately begin postponing non-urgent scheduled surgeries. It is important to note that urgent and emergency procedures will not be impacted. Patients with scheduled surgeries will be con contacted by an IH booking clerk. In addition for gastrointestinal and endoscopy procedures, patients may be contacted by their surgeon's office. Patients should wait to be contacted directly about their procedure. Some surgeries, including those related to cancer and scheduled cesarean sections, will not be impacted. Patients will be contacted to confirm date and times. IH recognizes the significant impact of postponing surgeries. However, this is a necessary step to ensure we have enough, enough hospital capacity for those affected by COVID-19 should we see a rapid increase in demand like other countries have experienced. Interior Health will assess this, this action over the coming weeks and will advise patients when their procedure has been booked. Um, So that's from Interior Health. Uh, we've talked about the, what the Justin Trudeau is doing. So we've been over that, so that's good. So that's pretty much at this moment, all the news that's fit to print. Um, I'm sure that as we've just been sitting here talking for the last half an hour, that there's been lots more happening out in the world. So, uh, follow us again tomorrow at about around 11. Again, I'm sorry that we were so late today. Um, but we will be back tomorrow at 11 with 
more of what's going on and what matters to you in Ashcroft and Cache Creek. If you know of anything else that I might have missed, again, please email me at hon at ashcrofthub.com and uh, we will get back to you or talk about your story uh, tomorrow at 11. Um, and again, thank you very much for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. We're trying to pull all the information together as best we can to get it out to you, but we can't uh, see everything. Uh, so please, if there's something that I might have missed, send it in my way, and we will talk about that tomorrow. Thank you again very much. Uh, stay safe, stay clean, stay apart from each other, and we'll talk to you guys soon.